All right, howdy folks. So we got our copper coating on. Um, so now we're gonna put our jumpers on. Um, we're gonna put the jumper over click. So that way it makes an audible click and flashes the LED. If you own an iPhone or um, some some of the some s certain smartphones, uh, you can put the iPhone jumper on. It's labeled IP. It's next to the LED. It's the one with the long handle because it's annoying to reach in there with that LED there. So you can put that on. If you own an iPhone, you'll probably just want to keep this on. If you want to use this with an Arduino, though, you do not want that I iPhone jumper on. I'm gonna leave it off. Um, now we're gonna place the. Uh, the IC, so be aware with the IC, they tend to have p their pins wider than the socket when they're new. So um, I tend to start with uh, one side first and I push it gently. And see, I bent one of the pins, that's going to fold up underneath the chip. So I correct it, make sure they're all straight. Um, you can bend all of the pins in slightly together, that's fine, but just make sure that if any deviate, you you fix it or it's going to fold up under the chip. Um, so make sure, and then I look for, through the side as I do it, and I make sure that no pins are folded up before I do the final press, and it will push almost flush with the, 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 the socket holder, and I make sure that all of the pins are in their appropriate uh, slot. And then uh, in terms of orientation, this dot corresponds to that notch on the socket and that notch on the soak screen. So just be aware that not indi uh, that dot indicates pin one of the IC. All right, cool. So we actually have a completed um, detector. So this should should actually start detecting now, um, and I will show you how to calibrate it uh, next. All righty, folks. So we should have a working detector now. So let's find out. We'll hook up our 9 volt battery, make sure um, they go connect to the opposite uh, connections, right? Uh, big, small, small, big. Okay, we connect it. Um, and make sure to turn it to the middle position. But it's squealing. Why is it squealing? Is there a ton of radiation? Well, no, we haven't calibrated it yet, so we're going to do that. This is normal where it starts with a really high threshold, and you're going to turn it counterclockwise and it's going to decrease. Um, they might it might not start at that squealing level one possibility right is it starts um, one possibility is that it could start and be careful not to poke through the copper with your screwdriver um, and I forgot to mention yeah get, get a precision screwdriver like this or it might be in an eyeglass repair kit um, it makes life a lot easier you can get away without it by using like a razor blade or something, but get one of these, they're fairly cheap, or an eyeglass repair kit. So one possibility is that the um, calibration, like you turn it on for the first time, and it, it could actually be on the opposite side of the threshold. One way to tell, um, the LED is a little bit more green. Um, it still sounds pretty, pretty, pretty busy, right? So all we gotta do is turn it counterclockwise, we're going to pass through the threshold, and then the counts are going to start to decrease. We're in the proper domain now. Um, so uh, another possibility is that it starts on the, the right side, the, the, the counterclockwise side of the threshold. Um, but the thing is, it's, it's actually detecting it's not actually detecting radiation uh, for the most part. A lot of this is falsified counts from radio waves and other background. Um, so uh, if you've taken the time to extract a americium button from a, a smoke detector, the smoke detectors, you can get them for like four bucks at Walmart. Um, you, you, you rip the button out or leave it on the little stainless holder. Um, so uh, Um, so we find that, yes, it is, in fact, radioactive. Um, so we want to, it's detecting the americium quite well, but we want to make sure that um, it's not detecting too many false counts. So we, we, when we turn it from the threshold, this is closer to the threshold. I've turned it clockwise to do that, but I don't want that. This is fake counts. These are not real gamma events. Um, 
So what I recommend is turn it until it clicks. I, I mean, if you don't have an, a radioactive source, turn it until it clicks between three and eight times per, for background. It depends on your area, though, so that's not a very precise way to do it. Um, honestly, turn it until it stops clicking. And then add a source so that you know that it still detects uh, uh, events of certain energy. Um, we've gotten it to essentially um, a zero count background, um, but I need to know that it can still detect low energy events. And americium is actually one of the lowest energy gamma emitters that you can get reasonably. So then we just make sure that the americium is under the photodiode and it still detects it. So this is good. This is a good um, a good calibration. It might be a little bit on the low side, so I might um, turn it up a little bit. Uh, to turn it up, turn it clockwise. And with an americium button, you should actually see about 60 to 70 counts per minute. So about one a second. Um, And so we're going to turn it up just a bit more. That looks like a pretty good, pretty good calibration. Um, might turn it up just a tiny bit more, but let's double check that it's not detecting too many false counts, so we leave the source away from it. It looks good. Um, so then it, maybe you can't get an americium button, but you can almost certainly get sodium-free uh, a salt substitute. This is potassium chloride, and it will say potassium chloride in the um, ingredients. Uh, chloride, potassium, uh, or potassium chloride. So. Um, one way to do that is just keep it next to the potassium chloride. Um, when I'm doing um, high count uh, tests, I stick it in a bag and I actually stick it inside the potassium chloride to get the highest counts. But we are getting a pretty decent count off of it. Um, so it works. It's outstanding. Um, and then for some fun, let's try out next hot source. So, uh, Maybe you're, you're getting one of our um, thorium uh, source disks. Not bad. Um, or, you know, maybe you've got a nice cesium source disk. Nice and hot. <laughs> so, yeah, we made a working detector. Outstanding. And that's how to calibrate it, so it's not too bad. Um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of fine-tuning. If, if you can hook it up to an Arduino, you can get better counts and do a more precise calibration or possibly um, a lower energy source than the americium. Americium produces gammas in a range of about 30 keV up to about 130. So it's towards the lower end of what this can detect. So it's not a bad calibration source. Um, and it is about 0.1 uh, microcuries. So, um, so, uh, so it's not... it. It's a very, very weak source as well, um, but it is primarily an alpha emitter, so you won't see too many gammas, so you do have to be patient, but, and that's how to calibrate it. I'll see you next video.